The rocket oven shown in this video was built during a mission trip to Honduras. The build was done inside a small greenhouse covered kitchen located in a small community in the San Lorenzo Mountains some 20 miles and two hours outside the city of La Esperanza in the state of Intupica. It was built on the property of Wendy and Elvin, a husband and wife gracious enough to allow me and my team to build the greenhouse and oven on their property. Here Wendy is making tortillas. She uses a slow burning stove which uses up a great deal of wood. Building her a rocket stove and a rocket oven would give her a way of cooking and baking in a faster and less expensive way than the way she is baking now. This video will be a complimentary to a step-by-step -step booklet written to help people build a rocket stove and rocket oven. The rocket oven is made up of two parts, a rocket stove and a chamber above it called a rocket oven. The first part of building the rocket stove is leveling the ground to ensure that the stove and oven are stable the ground must be level and on stable ground. The second part of building the rocket stove is placing the base where the rocket oven will sit on. 8 by 8 by 16 concrete blocks were used with the flat side up. The third part of building the rocket oven is building the rocket stove itself. As you can see, I placed the brick in an inverted U shape with the half brick in the, in the front of the first tier of the stove. This opening is where the air will travel into the stove and be, bring the needed oxygen to the fuel in the fire chamber. I then place a wire grate or expanded metal over the air intake. I place the second tier of bricks on top of the wire mesh overlapping the brick in the air intake as seen in the video. A half brick is needed to finish the tier. I continue the building of the stove by adding the third tier to the stove by overlapping the brick to complete the fuel intake. Again, I need a half brick to complete this tier. This will complete the fuel intake, create the fire chamber toward the rear of the stove. The fourth part of the rocket stove is the chimney or the exhaust. In this tier, I place the brick in an overlapping manner over the previous, as I did in the previous tier. The difference is that I use a brick to cover the opening and use bricks to encircle or enclose the tier. I continue this process until I finish placing the brick to create the chimney or exhaust. It was important for me to rub the fire brick together due to the rough areas and inconsistencies on the surface of the bricks. This would not be the case in standardized brick. Finally, I cap the top of the tier with four half bricks for the base of the lower radiating plate for the oven. The next part of the rocket oven is building the chamber itself. It must have a a concrete base as we did with the base for the rocket stove. In this step I place concrete blocks with the flat side up. I place the block on the four corners of the rocket stove base. They must extend beyond the front of the base and be positioned so the blocks are wide enough and deep enough to create a base for the oven chamber. In this case the block is placed so 
that the blocks were placed 33 and a half inches wide and 28 and a half inches deep, centering the rocket stove in the middle. This was time consuming, but shifting the blocks around helped in creating a base for the rocket oven. The wooden base. After I set the concrete base, I placed two by fours to create a wooden base on the concrete blocks as seen in the picture. As you can see, the boards going side to side overhang the blocks by two inches. These boards will be used for attaching a support frame later in the build. I cut the boards on the sides also to extend two inches beyond the back of the base. These boards will be used for attaching the rear part of the support frame. The remaining boards can be cut to cover the remaining space. In the rocket oven base, I placed brick covering the wooden base. I used an angle grinder with a masonry blade to cut some of the brick to the right size. The next part is creating the rocket oven. The oven part of the build is a chamber that will manage the heat created by the rocket stove, as mentioned before. In this build I use nine tiers, a 14 gauge top plate and an added tier to cover over the top plate. I placed each brick in an overlapping manner for added strength of the chamber. I needed to measure the width of the chamber since each brick was not the same size. The top tier allows for the chimney opening towards the back of the oven. There will be a need for half bricks for each of the tiers. The next part of the building of the rocket stove is working on the inside of the oven. It's here where I place the brick alongside the walls of the chamber in a horizontal manner which creates a ledge for the cooking grate and the top radiating plate. The cooking grate is an expanded metal sheet placed about halfway between the upper and the lower radiating plates. The upper radiating plate, which is a 14 gauge metal sheet, is placed about an inch and a half below the top plate. This plate allows the heat to be reflected back towards the cooking area of the oven and also allowing the air to be redirected around the exhaust hole. Make sure to keep these brick level. It was difficult process with these bricks since they were not standardized. I used an angle grinder as I mentioned before to shape the brick to size. The last part of the rocket oven is building a support frame. I cut two by four boards to be fitted on each side of the front of the oven along with a two by four for the top part uh, to create this frame. This can be seen in the pictures. This creates a support to lock down the brick and for the attachment of the door later on in the build. I use three and a half inch screws to anchor the wood frame to the base and to each part of the frame. The next part of the support were boards measured, cut, and attached alongside each of the top and rear of the oven. Notice that these boards are attached to the base boards that overhung two inches past the base in the rear of the oven. I use 1x4 boards to create the door support boards. These attach to the front of the oven to the support frame. This creates a flat surface for the door to seal the oven from the heat escaping the chamber. I attach the door to the oven that have been prepped with hinges and hasp already welded to the door. I use three and a half inch screws along with a level to attach the door to the door support boards. In this build, a 5 inch exhaust pipe was fitted and installed due to the rocket oven being inside the greenhouse 
and a need for ventilation. Normally, this is not needed. A cap was placed over the end of, of the, the pipe to prevent rain from entering the exhaust and then into the oven. I included a segment of another video I did titled Rocket Stove, A Solution for Disaster. In this segment, I demonstrate the building of a fire in the stove and boiling water. A rocket stove uses very little uh, wood. Uh, uh, that's its advantage. It uses small twigs or in my case, I use two by fours, which I've chopped up and gone ahead and used a, a, a small hatchet to make them into small little pieces. And, and it, it uh, becomes a very a big advantage. It produces a lot of heat, and so I can cook very easily with it. a rocket stove. It works very effective and usually you can build this within five minutes, have it up and running. You can use it to uh, boil water which would be very effective if you have an earthquake and you have to have clean water or cook with. It'll use up a small amount of wood. You can see that the wood is very small and it, uh, and it burns very efficiently. Uh, this is very important when it comes to uh, having an emergency that you're not going to have a great amount of wood around and this is this makes it a little bit easier for storing purposes and starting the fire. As I mentioned, uh, I, I sometimes will even use the, the wood a little bit larger. What happens is that that brings the temperature down a little so I'm not using as much and uh, I'm able to stabilize the heat. This becomes very effective. Using small, thin kindling is essential for cooking and baking in a rocket stove and rocket oven. These are the images of the kindling I've used in the past. Baking in a rocket oven is very much like baking in a regular oven. These pictures show the various types of items I have baked. I have baked cinnamon, breakfast bread, brownies, banana bread, pizza, and bread. Baking is something she's never done before. After I built the rocket oven, she was able to begin to bake.
And uh, the results of that are shown with the uh, bread that she has done. Attaining a copy of Building a Rocket Stove and Rocket Oven booklet can be attained by emailing me at the address listed. The booklet is more detailed account of building the stove and oven. It includes many other pictures and diagrams related to the building of a rocket stove and rocket oven. The building supplies used in this build include 2x4s, 1x4s, 3.5 inch screws, a 14 gauge metal plate, expanded metal, 3 inch hinges, hasp, concrete blocks, and fire bricks. Please leave a comment in the comment section. Also give me a like and follow me on my channel. There are other videos related to this video and other videos of trips I've made to Honduras and Mexico.